Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with Backtracking by Amberdoth. This is apparently quite an easy killer Sudoku puzzle. Um, and if people like killer Sudoku puzzles, there's a couple of playlists on the channel. I do tend to link to playlists now, um, uh, where there, which are exclusively about killer Sudoku. First of all, there is the skilling Sudoku playlist, which is covering the skilling Sudoku pack, um, which was designed for people to learn about killer Sudoku. Um, all and basically was a pack of killer Sudoku only, which started with beginner puzzles, walks in the park is what we call them, and then take you all the way up into treks into the wilderness. There's also the race to 37 playlist, which is uh, 27 killer Sudoku created by Clover, um, which uh, all are themed around killer cages of specific sizes 10, 11, 12, 13. Really cool series. It's one of the things that got me into Sudoku and I can honestly say that the channel wouldn't exist because I would never have stayed in the hobby if it wasn't for that pack which is why I wanted to do a feature. So check out the playlist section of my channel if you want to look into that. But this apparently is an introduction or an introductory difficulty killer, and I needed something I could record quickly. So this is what I am doing. Um, backtracking by Amber Dot. So um, how does this work? Nice and simply, I believe. In every box, in every row, and in every column, we have to place the digits one to nine without repetition. These are the normal rules of Sudoku. Um, We've also got killer cages, which are these cages in the grid. And what they mean is that the digits that are placed in the cages have to sum to the number in the top left corner in the cage. So for example, these three digits will have to sum to 10, but digits cannot repeat within cages. So we couldn't do that by going two, two and six. This would not work. Um, perfectly valid by Sudoku and math, but not valid by killer Sudoku because you cannot repeat digits within cages. I'm going to restart my um, to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. Now, one of the things, and I call this out a bit, is there is a um, killer Sudoku calculator built into Sven's Sudoku pad, which you can find, I think it's under advanced killer calculator here, um, which you might be able to see, um, which is, uh, if you turn that on, then just above the title of the puzzle, which is off my screen, but you'll be able to access a killer calculator, which so when you click on a cage, it will show you the possible options for a cage of that size um, and then click on digits to eliminate them or options to turn them off um, so uh, if you're still new to killer sudoku or if you're like me terrible at math um, i find that's a perfect aid memoir you can just use that to help remember which options cages can't be now one of the things i don't need it for is the only way to make up a six cage is with the very smallest digits which is one two and three now the largest cage we have as a 20, but there are multiple ways of making up 20. So a 10 cage here. Now a 10 cage needs, there's something about 10 cages because you do need a one, two or a three in a 10 cage. Cause if you don't have a one, two or three in a 10 cage, then what you end up with is four, five and six and four, five and six is 15. So there must be a one, two or a three in a 10 cage and it has to be there. Now, that means the minimum I can put in here is four and five because one, two, and three is not available. So this has to be four, five with one, which takes one out of those, which makes this the one. So these are now six, seven, eight, nine, but there's going to be a problem with some of these, surely, or down here, because I can't put a one in this 13 cage, which is going to restrict that. And I can't put two and three into this 13 cage because if I did, they'd both have to go into that cell. So, but there has to be a two or a three in a 13 cage because again, four, five, and six equals um, 15. So the two, three has to go here. But I need to put, I'm not sure. This is starting to get a little bit trickier. Now, the minimum I can put into these is six, seven, which is 13. And the minimum I can put there is two. And six, seven, and two is 15. So these are six, seven, and two. And there's no six, seven in there. These are eight and nine. And this is now under a lot more pressure. Because if this is eight, these sum to five. 
a nine, they sum to four, but the minimum there is one and the minimum there is two. But I could do two, three in this cage, I think. Like I could go three, two, eight. Not sure. Oh, hang on. This two makes this three and this two. Actually, it's this 10 cage now because the same as this one, this needs a one, two or a three in it. That can't be one, two, three. So this is one or three. Now... If this is three, these would have to sum to seven, which would be one, six, two, five, or three, four, which I can't do. So this is a one. This is now nine. And again, I can't use one, eight, two, seven, or three, six. So this is four, five. And these are six, seven, eight, nine. Now these can't be eight and nine because I've already hit 17 if I do that. This has a minimum of three. But this has a minimum of 13, so this has to be three or four. And if I don't, if I put a nine in here, nine, six is already 15 and I've blown the total. So there's no nine in here, which means this is the nine for the row. If I put, so this must have a six in it. So this is the seven, this is the six. So there's no seven in here. This is six, eight, which is 14. So this is the three. This is cool. The way these are bouncing off each other, I really like this. This is, of course, assuming I have not made a grievous error. Which is very possible. I am good at grievous errors. This now has a minimum of three. And it can't be six, because six plus eight, I've already blown the total. So this is three because I can't use four or five. So this is three. If this is three, nine, this is one and it can't be. So this is three, eight and three and eight sum to 11. So this is two. So this is three. These now sum to 10. And the only way you can make 10 is using a low digit and a high digit. One, not two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. This is four, six, because I can't use the one, two, or three, which makes this the five and this the four. This eight, of course, has made this nine. These digits now are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, surely I've got the similar problem. If this is seven, eight, this is 15, this would have to be a three. If this is, which I can't do. Well, actually, the way I want to look at this is two or five. If but because if I put a six in here, I'm sure the six, let's look at the options. So if actually, let's just look at the options the other way. I, I can see this is almost certainly going to have to be a two, but if this is seven, eight, uh, this is 15, this would be a three, which doesn't work. If this is seven, nine, then this is 16 and this would be a two. If this is eight, nine, this would be 17 and this would have to be a one. So this is two and this is seven, nine, which means this is the eight. And let's confirm I haven't got that wrong. 16, 18 with the two, correct. So th this is very cool. So this cage maybe? The question is knowing which cage to look at next. So there's no three in this 10 cage. Is it this quad? One, two, three, four. These are six, seven, eight, nine. There is no six there. There's no nine there. This is seven, eight. So this is six, nine. And six and nine is 15. So this is a five, which means this is a four and this is a five. These are now a known triple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, one, two, and seven does sum to 10. If this is one, two, this is seven. If this is one, seven, this is two. And if this is one, two, seven, this is one, but it can't be one or two. This is the seven. This is the one, two, this is the seven. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, which cage to look at next? 
I think I want to look at this quad because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but there's no seven or eight in there. So this is five, nine. I take five, nine out of those. Five, nine though sums to 14. So this is a four, which looks back here, making this six and this four. This seven has made this eight and this seven. I don't have the order of this five, nine though, but there's no four in this 11 cage or five. So I can take four out of the 11 cage, five out of the 11 cage. So that's probably not the best way to look at it. I've probably been doing this much smoother without. I do get four up here somewhere by Sudoku, but now four is not here and four is not here. So four is in one of those. I can probably put four into that 15 cage, but I do know what these three digits are. Let's do the same trick I've been doing in the other columns. They are one, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are one, three, four. Now, if these are one and three, that sums to four and that has to be 12. This is one and four, it's five. So this isn't one, there's no one in here. This has to be three, four, which is seven, making this the nine. This is the one. The nine looks back making the seven and this nine. This is beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is absolutely stunning. This puzzle was recommended to me and I can see why. This is absolutely this is perfect for my channel this is exactly the sort of puzzle i love on my channel so of course the question now is where do i look next let's look at this quad one two three four six nine now there's no four in there there's no th this is a six because it sees three four and nine so now i can take six out of those there's no nine there um, and now maybe this column, although I want to stay in cages. So there's no four, five or six in this 11 cage. So how do I make up 11 without four, five or six? Well, I can't use one, two, three. So I have to use a seven, eight or nine. Now, if I use a nine, the other two digits sum to two, that's not going to work because I'd have to use one and one. If I use eight, so I need to use a seven or an eight in here. The seven would be in here. Or I'm not sure about the eight. But two of these digits are from one, two, and three. Can I do it without a one? Because if it's two, three, I need a six. So I need to put a one in this cage and it has to be there, which means there's a one down here somewhere and I know where it is because of that one. So this is sum to 10. So I can't use one nine and I can't use four six. So these are either two eight or three seven. That's not three, that's not seven. I'm not sure what that's doing for me. It is putting nine in one of those two by Sudoku because nine can't go there and nine can't go in here. So nine is in one of those two. So that's the six, that's the nine. So there's a six down here. This eight cage, well, there has to be a one in an eight cage. I should have marked that earlier. And this one is knocking it out of there. So that's a one. So that's a two. So that's a one. You've got to keep jumping backwards and forwards between simple killer logic and these really nice, like pressuring pointing deductions. And because I'm jumping back, it's possible I've just missed something. But because I've been thinking about these pressuring pointing deductions, I've just forgotten basic Sudoku. So these have to sum to seven. So they're either two, five or three, four, and they're not three, four. So this is two, five. And that's means that's the five and that's the two. There's no two, don't put a one in there. You just wanted to take a two out. But these had to sum to 10. So there's no eight there. This five makes this nine and this five. So this is a seven or an eight. And this seven tells me this is the eight. This is the seven. This is the three. Oh, this is so cool. This is so, so cool. Uh, let's look at this triple. Oh, no, I don't need to. This three has made this nine. So this is a pair. I can take nine out of there. This is a three, four pair. And these are one, two, three, four, five, two and eight. 
And this two is giving me the order. That's the eight, that's the two, that's the seven, no, seven, that's the eight. This is now known, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are a known triple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, six, and eight. Okay, there's no two there, there's no eight at the bottom. So there is an eight in this cage, which I am marking as a pencil mark. Normally I wouldn't for a triple, but I want to highlight there is an eight in that cage. So I've got an eight, and then either with a two or a six to get to 17, or basically with nine. So if it's eight, then I need six, three. And if it's eight with two, then it's eight, two, what do they need to? Nine, so seven. So this is three or seven, and it's not seven. So this is the three. This has to, three and eight is 11, so I need the six. So there's no two in here. This is the two. This is a six, eight. Uh, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not sure on the order of that. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. This five has made this a six and this a five. I'm not sure on the order on those yet, but I do know these are one, two, three, six, and nine, and I know the order of those. This is the six, this is the nine. Have I not broken these open yet? Nope, but I've still got a cage left. This is so cool. So, oh, no, this three has done this. This is four, this is three. I'm going to get rid of, oh, rid of that for now. So this 15 cage. What can't it have in it? So a 15 cage is either four, five, six, or it's got a low, a mid, and a high digit. That's just the way a 15 cage works from lots and lots of Sudoku. There's no one in it. There's no two in it. And there's no three in it. This is four, five, six. And there's no five there. This is the five. So this is a four, six, looking up, making this eight and this six. And the, uh, by the way, it couldn't have a one in it because there's two ones looking at the column. Couldn't have two in it because that two knocks out those and that two knocks out those. And it couldn't have three in it because those threes see all of the cells in the cage. So the minimum digits I could put it in are four, five, six, which already summed to 15. That four, six resolved this eight, six. This five resolves this four, five. The four looks down resolving this three, four. Um, six, okay, right, uh, we'll get there, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this is a nine. Uh, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and I know the order, seven and eight, which resolves this four and seven. Um, the eight makes this six and this eight, the six looks back making this four and this six, and now I'm down to these last digits, which are of course one, two, and three, because four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's a two, three there, so that's the one, there is a three there, that's two, and that's three in the corner to finish the puzzle. That was great. That may be one of the, my favorite puzzles in quite a while. Um, I don't, I like puzzles that make me go, oh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. And I know there's this huge trend at the moment to go for puzzles where people are like going to stare at it for 45 minutes and be like, and then find something and go, oh, and have this huge lighthouse moment. I like lots of little light bulbs. I mean, think of it like Christmas decorations. I want little lights that go off a lot rather than one big bang. Um, it's, it's just the way that I like my puzzles and, um, it's kind of the thing that I try and bring to the channel to the, the most because people's time is precious. If you turn around to people and say, this is a puzzle that's going to take you two hours, a lot of solvers are not going to be able to dedicate two hours all the time. Um, whereas I like to bring puzzles that people can do. People can sit down and do in a lunch break, um, or a coffee break or, or something like that. That's what I try and do on my channel. Um, and I've been finding it very hard because they're not the puzzles I get sent or the puzzles that people seem to be creating at the moment. Um, whereas this, this is just great. Thank you, Amber Dot. The, mwah, fantastic puzzle. Um, Thanks everyone for watching. I really needed this today. Today has been horrible and this has been a, a bright light in the middle of the day. Thanks everyone. Hope you're enjoying the content I bring, whether it's hard or not. Um, that, that was beautiful. Um, good luck with your solving.